The Chicago Bulls have now made it through day two of training camp. We're going to talk about some of the things that they're focusing on on practice so far and then how the Chicago Bulls need to evolve their offense next season. Billy Donovan was also voted as the uh, coach most likely to get fired this season. We're going to talk about it all and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for the day. We're going to talk about the Chicago Bulls so far through training camp, right? Day two of training camp in, and by all reports, the Chicago Bulls have been focusing a lot on the defensive side of the ball so far in practice. Now, you know, you know, we've heard a lot about how they need to evolve the offense and things like that, and we're going to talk about it. But with the Bulls wanting to push the pace a little bit more, right, and push the pace, let me let me say this, right? I think everybody, when they hear push the pace, they think that this team is going to be a run-and-gun team. That's not necessarily true, right? It means making quicker decisions on the offensive side of the ball, which we'll talk about. But with this team wanting to, do, to be a quicker team, right, wanting to be a team, especially with the bench unit, their biggest strength is going to be getting out in transition and playing solid defense. It makes sense that the Bulls are kind of focusing on the defensive side of the ball. Now, yes, they're a top five defense last season by the efficiency ratings, but we know they have areas that they absolutely can improve on, even with, on that defensive side of the ball. And so that's kind of been the focus right now. They have done some offensive things, and it does seem like very much so that that what we've heard from the, the coaching staff, they are trying to focus on right as far as individually. Right. When you look at the Chicago Bulls last season, they were 24th in offensive rating. Right. And that is you know, that, that's questionable. And then when you look at that, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, and Nikola Vucevic all finished with their highest true shooting percentage of their careers, right? And so when you when you look at how the Chicago Bulls offense needs to take a step, right, and then make that necessary step, this is why you heard things like Billy Donovan and even the other players talk about how they need to trust their other teammates more, right? Trust the role, role players, put the role players in positions to, to get shots, and we need those role players to be able to feel confident in taking those open shots. When you have a, a team that their core three all had great individual numbers, that's what it was. Individual, they had great numbers, right? But when you hear that like that, that thing and that quote we heard of not really feeling like a team, right? Individual success does not always mean team success. And that's what the Chicago Bulls team really needs to focus on, right? And so, you know, when you hear about, you know, things uh, and, and, you know, that when you hear that stat for one, but then hear that the Chicago Bulls are really, you know, trying to put an emphasis on playmaking, right? Operating in space, making quicker decisions, right? And that is, you know, moving without the ball. These are things that we've been talking about here, at least on this channel, for a long time, right? Is the Bulls needing to be to do those things? And so, you know, to hear that they're they are incorporating that is good, right? Because I think that that is how you can get to the next step offensively for this team, right? Is to get out of that. The Bulls were efficient defensive team. They still had their struggles and limitations on the defensive side. And I think if they can shore some of those up while increasing their offensive rating, that is going to put this team in a much better position and scenario. The biggest question is, is are they going to do it consistently? And that is one thing that, you know, hopefully this team and, you know, going through training camp and things like that is learning that they need to do is that they need to focus in and lock down on a, on a level of play, right? They need to lock down on trusting the other players, empowering, building confidence in those younger and, and role players around this team. Now, you brought in Javon Carter. You brought in Torrey Craig. And it's good to hear that those guys talk about, like, how they feel like they can really help take this Bulls team to the next level, which is weird to hear from role players, right? But that's what you need. You need role players that are going to be confident in what they can do, be confident in the roles, be confident in the execution. And so, you know, that's what you want to see from this team. And, you know, the, the the other young players, the Patrick Williams, the Kobe Whites, right, who Kobe's even talked about his need and desire to be a more consistent player, right? Alex Caruso in his role, right? And, and things like that, using drum a, a, a better as well. This team overall has to get better in, in, the, in the things that they can do that are in their control. So for the Chicago Bulls team to really get to the next level, a lot of it does have to come through that offensive evolution for this team. And so, you know, everything's not going to be perfect, right? But I do think that, when you look at him, when we talk about playing through Nikola Vucevic, part of the reason why that does, that that can work, and it, it's not to say that Nikola Vucevic, all of a sudden, if you play through him, he's going to change his position on 
the his role in the offense as far as like well his his positioning in the offense. He's not all of a sudden going to become the number one option on offense. Well, no, more so playing through Vooch, what that means is taking advantage of the things that he does well and how that can help get the Chicago Bulls offense to the next level. Nikola Vucevic's playmaking is some of the best on the team, right? He's effective in it. He, he can see the floor extremely well. So when you think about playing faster, don't necessarily think about in getting in transition. Think about the fact of like being more decisive, making decisions, moving in space. Uh, taking quick shots, but getting smart shots up there as well. Also, that puts you in a position to get those offensive rebounds that Billy Donovan and the other you know uh, players and 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 AK have talked about on this team. So you know we we'll end up seeing right. It seems like in practice uh, today, uh, Alice Caruso really pushed the pace in practice yesterday, I should say. And so you know Nikola Vucevic was able to take advantage of mismatches and things like that. Uh, Io Desumu, uh has understood better so far and how to get. The, the ball to uh, Nikola Vucevic as well. And we're seeing DeMar DeRozan even take corner threes as well. So that's what the things that are going to hopefully take the Chicago Bulls team to the place that we hope that they're going to be, right? But again, it's easy to do it right now and talk about it in practice. The biggest thing and the thing that we've always had difficulty with as a team is that when the adversity comes, right? When that stuff starts coming, when Teams double down when they pack the paint, when they understand and, and you know, they they ratchet up their defense to that next level. We haven't always been able to respond to that in a way that, you know, we don't get off our game. Right. Or we start getting selfish the my turn, your turn, the hero ball. Right. Those are things that we are trying to get away from as a team. And let's hope that we can do it. But as of right now, you know, without having games, well, only a few days away, Sunday, we'll be talking about Chicago Bulls basketball again, which is crazy. Thank God the Bears don't have a game on Sunday. They actually play uh, today. So thank God I get a little break from having to do double duty at that point. But um, I just think that this team has the the players to, to execute a better offensive system. That 24th overall in offensive rating is not indicative of the talent that we have on, on the team, right? But they have to move away from get, having the individual success. I'm glad that everybody's having, everyone last season had their highest true shooting uh, percentage seasons of their career. It's all good, all cool, all fine and Danny, but it didn't come via success on the basketball court. And so, you know, when you talk about the team getting to the free throw line, which is another focus from Billy Donovan this year, right? Playing being more decisive, attacking the paint more, which is something that we're also seeing in practice so far from the Chicago Bulls, is trying to find ways to get to the paint. Now, that doesn't always mean it's going to be Vooch. That means it's going to be Zach Levine breaking uh, players off the dribble, right? Using pick and rolls more to your advantage, right? Going downhill a little bit more and creating those opportunities. But the biggest thing outside of, you know, playing through Vooch, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 taking advantage of his playmaking ability and things like that, when the half-court Offense is needed. When the, when the game slows down, right, this Chicago Bulls team needs to understand the importance of moving without the ball. And that is something that I want to see this coaching staff really instill in these players, the importance of always moving, right? And, you know, it's easy for me to sit that from, from this standpoint, right, being in this studio in my crib, right? But ultimately, like, a coach that sees that, like, that you at that point, you need to stop practice. When you see players standing around, right, and watching DeMar go to work or watching Zach Levine go to work, Practice needs to stop, and we and just a highlight needs to be put on, okay, what are you doing? Why are you just standing there in the corner, right? If that's not what Billy Donovan is coaching them to do, to not just stand in the corner, if he is, then that's on Billy Donovan, right? But if he's not, then you need to stop practice and say, what are you doing here? Where do you think you should be right now? Why are you standing here in this corner? Why are you standing here within the three-point line not moving? What are you doing, right? And that's what all these young players you need to instill in them, and that's what we need to see to get this Bulls offense to the next level. Will we? Can we? That remains to be seen, right? Like I said, it's easy right now to say all the right things for the, for the, the players and the coaching staff, right? But we need to see it come out. And, you know, I expect the first couple of preseason games maybe to be a little rough, right? We'll see. The Chicago Bulls actually look pretty good in preseason the last couple of years, but, like, we'll end up seeing what that looks like for this team. But I think ultimately, like, we just we want to see the evolution. We want to see the next step. You have now bet on this coin continuity again, right, for the most part, and how those new players that you have brought in, how are they utilized and things like that. So we'll end up seeing, man. But with that being said, Sports Betting AG has listed Billy Donovan as having a 4-1 to favorite as far as being the first coach fired this season. And when I saw that, all I could say is this. You, uh, you clearly, clearly they don't really know what this team is, right? They don't know the ownership group on this team, right? The, like, I, I, and I've said this a lot. I was actually over on the Gifted NBA channel. And, uh, you know, great channel. You guys go and check it out as well. But, like, 
uh, one of the things that we were talking about was was you know the coaching, right? And you know we we talked about the Jim Boylan thing, and I and I had mentioned to him how well the ownership group actually asked our new uh, management staff to keep Jim Boylan on when they initially came on, and he was flabbergasted by that. He was like, "Wait, what? Jim Boylan was a terrible coach, right?" And so that's what it, when people aren't really ingrained day to day with what the Chicago Bulls franchise really is some of that gets missed by you know people who kind of you know just yeah they enjoy and they watch basketball but they're not necessarily day in and day out with the ins and outs of a franchise and so you know when it comes to things like this as far as sports betting ag uh thinking that billy donovan has the best uh, odds to get fired as a head coach is like you can't possibly be paying attention to this actual organization one of the things that i said absolutely with this team is that is the fact that you know, once Billy Donovan said, yeah, I text and talk to Jer- Jerry Reinsdorf almost every day. I was like, yeah, he's going to be here for a minute, right? And I think also AK and Eversley do like Billy Donovan. And I think, you know, it's more so than just the ownership. I also think that this front office does. Now, that brings about its own questions and problems ultimately. But I know here that Billy Donovan is voted as the coach most likely to get fired. I kind of just look at that and smile because, listen, it's not happening. I-, I can tell you right now, right? And I hate to be that guy. I, I- this season would have to be such a failure for the Chicago Bulls for Billy Donovan to be to be fired. And by that, I don't just mean being sub-500. I mean that this team would have to win like 20 games, right? 20 games. And I think that that, that point, then we can start talking about the chances of Billy Donovan being fired. But other than that, I just don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. So, you know, we'll end up seeing what it, what it comes to with that, you know, uh, but when it, when it comes down to Billy Donovan and this coaching staff, Billy Donovan is not a perfect head coach. No. Is he going to be the head coach of the Bulls whenever in our history? Did we make it to the finals? Probably not, right, if we ever do make it to the NBA finals again. But I do think this. I've said this many times, and I know some people disagree with it. Billy Donovan's not a terrible basketball coach. He's just not. He's not a terrible coach. That doesn't mean that he's the right coach for this team, but that doesn't, that doesn't make him a terrible head coach overall. And my overall, my, my thought process is Billy is a good enough head coach to where if the Bulls have the right roster, we can have some success. Now, it depends on what you look at it by success. But, you know, where I have my issues with Billy Donovan is the, the player utilization, not using players to the best of their abilities and their strength, not knowing when to ride the hot hand, things like that. And so, you know, if we see those type of things improve from Billy Donovan and his coaching this season, okay, cool, that's a step in the right direction. But success is ultimately the the thing that that you have to judge a team by the most. And, you know, we'll see what happens with this team. Overall, like I, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but as far as like uh, things outside of that, when it comes to the Chicago Bulls team, like you really do want to look at what, what, what are the expectations, right? We talked about how the players set the expectations for themselves, right? As far as you know, Zach Levine and and everybody kind of setting that that expectation on, we want to make the playoffs, right? Now, will that happen? We'll end up seeing if that ends up happening with the Chicago Bulls team and how much they, they, you know, how many wins they can get. I personally think that this is a team that can get between 42 and 45 wins. And maybe the ceiling may even be higher on that if this team actually, you know, comes together and evolves in the ways that, you know, on paper they've talked about writing things like that. But this, this season for the Chicago Bulls, I think is an important season for a few different reasons, right? Outside of head coach Billy Donovan being fired or outside of them re-signing uh, DeMar DeRozan or Patrick Williams or not, when it comes down to it, this has to be a true season of evaluation, right, of everything. Evaluation of AK and Eversley and their self-evaluation on where they led this team. Evaluation on, you know, can you salvage this core enough, right? Is Lonzo Ball going to come back and save you next season? And, you know, we'll end up seeing, right? I don't, I don't want to put it on any one player to save, and that's not on Lonzo Ball to save this team. That's a lot to put on that surgically repaired knee with, with cadaver uh, cartilage in his knee, right? But at the end of the day, what this team needs to do is just take that step, right? It's too often last season, this team just didn't put up a fight. In games where we needed an edge, in games where we had the lead, the blown leads, right? Things like that is what we want to see improve for the Chicago Bulls team. And, you know, I think that it will in a way, right? The thing, the question is, will it consistently, right? And, you know, Zach Levine coming in fully healthy, I think it's definitely something that can help this team uh, just be on a better on a better standpoint overall, right? But I put the question out on Twitter and I asked, what do you want to see most from the Chicago Bulls this season? And so we got questions like this from Winton, who you guys will see in a lot. He says, I want to see Billy Donovan do what the F he actually says he's going to do this season. Agree with that 100%, right? Too often with Billy Donovan, we hear the right things, but it doesn't show up in, in, in reality for what we see, how it's executed on the basketball court, right? Bulls lead said consistency and playoffs 
absolutely agree with that, right? A consistent level standard of play, right? A consistent level of fight, right? When it comes down to this team. And that is why defining and, and building your identity is so important in these early stages of training camp for this team, right? Bulls for life says Billy getting fired. I, I highly doubt that's going to happen. Bulls Central, shout out to Jamal over there, says consistency. A lot of people, you see that's a, that's a, that's a consistent thing over there. Kelder, casual Kelder, he says BD's offense with prescribed motion in it. And that is really something as well that I've talked so much about, right? The need for moving without the ball. I don't understand why they don't teach fundamentals in basketball anymore. Moving without the ball is one of the most important things. Local Bulls fan says, uh, team as a whole, to stay consistent. DeMar, Zach, Vooch, sacrifice to elevate each other to wins. Kobe, Pat, Io, step up. Caruso, Javon, Craig, Drummond, be reliable. Shout out to you on that one. Uh, uh, Derek from Nothing But Bulls podcast said wins, right? That's what he want to see from that. Russell says Dalen Terry minutes. He's the closest thing to replacing Lonzo. He just needs to be able to shoot the three, but he'll be everything else. Now, you know, when it comes to Dalen Terry, raw potential out the wazoo for Dalen Terry. But we got to see it come, come together for sure. Um, from the Bulls fight eight, he says this. More Zach, less predictable offense, less I.O. Running gun play uh, D for 48 minutes. Listen, that's one thing I disagree with. Running gun, no. That is a terrible form of offense. Pushing the pace and running gun are very different things. But, hey, Paul says this, for them to play up to their potential. And that is what a lot of people even question. What is the potential for this team, right, ultimately, right? So, again, great things. People say winning games, continuity is a, bu a bunch of things in there. Wins, playoffs is a lot in that as well. So, you know, we'll end up seeing what happens when it comes down to that for this Chicago Bulls team. But I will say this, I do think for sure that this is probably going to be a better season than what some Bulls fans are saying or has the potential to be way worse. We'll end up seeing. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are, as I said, the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. Thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See you right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, break, media. media.